I'm like, what? We got a wine. We're so excited. He's like, <laughs> guys, uh, that's five of the 13 barrels. And we just stood up, like started yelling, gave him a big hug. And we're like, we just wanted to make something awesome. You did. He's like, yeah, but we're going to lose our ass. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're thinking. This is not your normal Napa Valley winery. Come on in. And you're totally right. It's definitely not your normal Napa Valley winery. This is Memento Mori, and excluding the fact that they make extraordinary Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley, they are far from what we consider by the book. Hello. Hello, hello. Hi, guys. Welcome. This right here, that's Adriel, one of the founders of Memento Mori and the best friend of this guy here, Hayes Drumray. The name Memento Mori signifies a special meaning to these guys and their friend who's not showed here, but this is a place that is not afraid to have a little fun and live a little. More on that later, though. I love a little champagne on arrival, and thankfully here at Memento Mori, popping champagne isn't reserved just for special celebrations. People tend to drink champagne to celebrate a milestone. But for us, with the Memento Mori philosophy, we drink it every day. Because for us, you know, Memento Mori is all about embracing life. Every day that we wake up, we see that as opportunity to celebrate. So every day is our milestone. I love this philosophy and how it fuels the egos behind everything they do. But I was curious about the source for this inspiration. Adriel and I, we met, Adriel's got a crazy backstory. We met at a, a little town called Alvin, Texas. Adriel grew up in this uh, little house with like 10 people in this 900 square foot house on this gravel road. My parents got divorced. I moved out there with my mom and things were just chaos in my house, like crazy unhealthy weirdness. And Adriel's house was like my safe house. Mm-hmm. And I'd go over there and his grandma and his mom would like just follow us around the house and offer us food to all the time. You honestly, you live the best life I have ever seen. I went off to Boston University and when I was 20, we had met actually, we both swam and then I met Adam, our other partner in the pool as well at Boston University. I was the captain of the swim team my senior year and that was the year that um, I had issues I went to see a doctor and in and, and one sentence the doctor kind of takes everything from you and it's like you're dropping out of school, you're dropping off the team, you've got cancer, but I want you to know I've never lost anyone to this cancer so you're going to be okay. But you got you have to do what I say. Right? And so you get that, that scare and, and for, for me a lot of people I think would spin it as one of the most awful experiences of your life and, and it was awful but uh, you know six months later when I was okay it turned out, I think, to be a bit of a blessing for me because I never really feared much in my past that. It wasn't all smooth sailing from there, though. Hayes went on to explain that the origin of Memento Mori happened after a failed company with Adriel and a complete loss of everything. It wasn't until years later that they eventually found success in another company. But with the three friends so spread out and little time to see each other, they decided to brainstorm some ideas that would allow their families to get together four to five times a year. You can probably guess what that was. Short of the capital to purchase their own winery, and after three years of recon in the valley, Memento Mori was founded like so many of our favorite wineries here, on the backbone of relationships. This ultimately led to finding their winemaker, Sam Kaplan, and to getting access to some of the most prized fruit in Napa Valley, Bextoffer Vineyards. So we felt we had the sources, we had the wine, and in 2010 we launched the brand. I picked the name Memento Mori. Uh, In Latin, it's remember your death and remember your mortality, but for us it's a remember to live kind of mantra. And all the art and the skeletons and the butterflies and everything that goes with it is really just trying to support that story. We don't, you know, yes, the wine will age 20, 30 years, but like, we really love it when people drink a lot, right? You know, because you, know, yeah. you just don't know how long you're going to be here, so enjoy it. That's kind of our whole fear. Memento Mori takes a slightly different approach in that their flagship wine isn't a single vineyard, but a blend of the Bextoffer fruit they started out with long ago. Since then, they've added a few new additions like Vine Hill Ranch, and while they've started to release some single vineyard bottlings, the crux of what they do still lives in the blend. In the blending of it, if you think about sort of Dr. Crane and Las Piedras, they have a, a, a little bit of a different sort of reputational profile. So Dr. Crane, fairly bold, like it's a, it's a big wine. 
And if you think about Las Piedras, like I view it as sort of like the softness. And if you think about sort of sort of stereotypical, not reputational, of Napa Valley Cabernet, it's like this big bowl that's sort of like when you first drink a young wine, it can be very um, prickly to sort of the sides of your uh, sides of your mouth when you first have it, the tannins, et cetera, et cetera. And I think stylistically, one of the things that I really appreciated about Sam's winemaking from the very beginning is that you could actually have a wine that could age, but you could actually drink it relatively young. But we were able to make, at least in my opinion, try to reach for a Cabernet-only wine that still has that gentleness and young, but yet the acidity to age for decades. And I think this really comes down to the vineyard sites. Dr. Crane was with us to start. But then now that we have VHR, Oakville Ranch, White's Vineyard, all the sort of the combination, it's a little bit of a, a terroir upon a terroir because terroir clearly de delivers a certain style for a wine itself. But when you have terroirs that you bring it together, it's like, I don't know, four dimensional chess. Over 10 years later, their success hasn't shifted their original philosophy to just make great wines with friends. This is a $150 bottle of wine, and we're like, oh my god, and Sam was just so defeated looking. He was like, oh. I'm like, what? We got a wine, we're so excited. He's like, <laughs> Why guys, uh, that's five of the 13 barrels. And we just stood up, like started yelling, gave him a big hug, and we're like, we just wanted to make something awesome. You did. He's like, yeah, but we're gonna lose our ass. Like, we're, you know, we're throwing away eight barrels. And I was like, doesn't matter. All we're going for is something that we'd be proud of, that we want to share, and that's been the philosophy the whole way. That was really a defining moment for me, was understanding that, all right, these guys are going to give me all the tools that I need to make the best wine possible, and that's all that mattered. You know, best vineyards, you know, whatever Coopers. I need. Coopers, barrels, yeah, the whole, whole nine yards. And so when, when we tell our story and we share our story, yes, the wine is amazing, and Sam has done a terrific job, but I think the story people they put themselves in it and they start to share. And to me, that's my favorite part about having a winery is being able to relate to people. And our clients, the people that come in here, have all done pretty amazing things. You know, we're at that price point that it, it is, you know, probably a little more expensive than we'd like it to be. But the people that are buying it have got some pretty incredible stories. They run some pretty amazing foundations. Uh, we support like so many different charities and it's, I just didn't expect that. Coming out of tech, I didn't, I didn't know that that's what this would be like. Is that almost everyone that comes in, like you wanna hang out with. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. The brand was a hit, and by 2018, it had grown so much that they realized they needed their own space. Meanwhile, everybody is calling. Memento Mori is this new hot brand with this up and coming winemaker with killer sources. And so people were calling and I would, Meet them in a park. <laughs> I mean, I did tastings at the French Laundry Garden. Don't tell Thomas. I would meet people in their hotel <laughs> lobbies, <laughs> hotel lobbies. I would do tastings, take them out to, I mean, literally I exhausted all of my resources for three years. And so finally, I, I remember I called Adriel and I was like, we need a budget and we need to do this because this is very real. This is very real. And so we launched the space in 2018. And, you know, as I was saying earlier, it was just really important to create a space that, you know, this brand was intended to be, which is fun, you know, and life embracing. And so oftentimes tastings here can get longer than they should be. And, <laughs> um, you know, it's just, I feel like it's the perfect platform for us, where we're at right now. It's working. We just wrapped up our tasting. It was everything I hoped it to be. I'm sure you loved all the interiors, but the wines really do speak for themselves. It was such a pleasure to get to taste with Sam and the owners and Genevieve and Lauren. And if you are visiting Napa Valley and this is an experience you'd like to have, of course, this is gonna be by appointment only. So make sure you email them, call them, get on the list to go tasting because they are quite busy at the moment. One other pretty important point to mention is the price of the wine. So you're looking at about 225 on up for the wines. For per bottle and each of them is incredible. They really do speak to their place, which is Napa Valley. If it's single vineyard, it speaks to that vineyard. But the flagship wine is a blend of several different vineyards. So you're really getting some of the best premium sites in Napa Valley all rolled into one and getting an enormously delicious 
pleasurable experience uh, all in one bottle. So I love this experience. I cannot wait to recommend it to my friends. I love that it's a little bit off the beaten path. I love that it's like an Alice in Wonderland adventure. You walk in, you get greeted with champagne. Uh, there's you know, my little bar over here, but I just love the vibe. I love the feeling and I honestly can't wait to come back. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.